Okay, we're back. We're live. I'm Jay Fardell. This is ThinkTech, uh, Energy 808, the cutting edge. And uh, we have Marco Mangelsdorf from Provision Solar and Hilo joining us as, as co-host of this program. And Leo Ascension, he's the newest commissioner of the PUC, and we want to meet him. Hi, Marco. Hi, Leo. How are you doing, Jay? Hey, guys. Hey, guys. So let's begin with introductions. I think that's fair. Uh, Marco, you are the introduction man here on Cutting Edge. Uh, can you give us a really not really nice introduction for Leo? Leo, you're going to like this. Oh, <laughs> I'll do my best, Jay. First of all, Leo, thank you uh, so much for joining us today. I really do appreciate that very much. And this rounds out our, our talking to the three commissioners, uh, starting with Jenny and then Jay and now Leo. So it's great that we get all three of them and uh, they all bring uh, their great perspective and, and deep depth and commitment to, uh, to trying to get things right in terms of regulatory matters. So thank you so much, Leo, for, for joining us today. Much, much appreciated. So Leo uh, was uh, approved by the, confirmed by the Senate, the state Senate back in June for a full term, uh, which uh, would take him if he, if he continues on uh, valiantly for, for six years, it would take him until uh, June 30th, 2026. He would be the longest uh, or has the most years ahead of him, so to speak, as commissioner. Uh, prior, coming, prior to coming to the PUC, he held a planning program administrator position with the State Office of Planning, uh, uh, also known as the OP. Uh, he also served as planning program manager of the Hawaii Coastal Zone Management Program, 2011 to 2013. 29 years, very impressive, 29 years of extensive experience in planning, policy analysis, and management throughout Hawaii and the Pacific region. He is a uh, homegrown fellow, from what I can tell, in terms of his education, a MBA degree from Hawaii Pacific University, as well as a master in urban and regional planning and BA in poli-sci. Well, poli-sci, of course, is uh, my, uh, my degree as well uh, from University of Hawaii at Anoa. So uh, it's great to have you on board, Leo, and thank you again so very much for, for joining Jay and I today. Real pleasure. Pleasure is all mine. Leo, do you want to rebut any of that? <laughs> Maybe I want to add that during that period that I was at the Office of Planning, I did serve as its director uh, for about five and a half years. Um, throughout a uh, little bit at the end of the Abercrombie administration, and Governor Ige was uh, kind enough to keep me on as the OP director uh, until the end of his first term. Yeah, please, please forgive my omission in, nope. uh, in reading that, uh, Leo. <laughs> so, Leo, you know, you're, you're the newest member of the PUC, but why? Why would you want to do this? <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll, I'll give you the, the, the reason. I, I think uh, at this stage of my career, uh, right, I'm a public servant. I'm a true civil public servant. I serve at the, the whim of the governor. Uh, went through that first term uh, where he supported planning and there are things that I wanted to do in the planning stream uh, to better planning in Hawaii as far as state government. Uh, I feel I did that up, you know, up to a certain point, four years. And then um, he asked, uh, what else did I want to do in the second term? And I said, well, I want to, you know, certainly I'll, I'll serve wherever you want me to serve. I will um, do what you want me to do. You know my, you know my background. You know my, uh, my experience, uh, the, the ability for me to do work and to lead. And um, right, I, I, I basically asked to be the DBED director, um, right? And it comes down and, and understand that process. Uh, and then he right, chose uh, Mike McCartney to lead DBED. Uh, then he kind of turned around and out of left field, right, he said, why don't you go to the PUC? And he needed to find a replacement for Randy Iwase, uh, who retired, right, uh, early uh, in, his, uh, in his fifth year of the six-year term. Um, I will be honest, I, I had to think about it. I was like, you know, why, why be at the PUC? Um, governor talked to me about it. Uh, I thought about it and said, yeah, I might be willing. And, you know, I, I, I hearken back uh, to 30 years ago when I was getting my, my, just finished my BA and 
was walking around the, the UH campus and I stopped at a window uh, in then what was Porteous Hall, which is Saunders Hall now, right? And in the mirror, in the window, there was a sign that said, do you care about Hawaii, right? And I said, yeah, I do. <laughs> Went in and does the urban and regional planning department. And that has been kind of held inside of me. Like what I do is because I care about Hawaii. So this was another opportunity in my long span of planning and, and professional experience where I could care about Hawaii. Uh, and that really kind of rooted why, why I went to the PUC. I, I, I think of, I could be of service uh, there based on my experience. I have a little bit of utility background, uh, but moreover, it's more the big picture, I think that I can bring. Yeah, on that, on that note, I, I wanted to ask you, um, where, where do you feel the PUC fits, you know, in the state, in the firmament of state government and the firmament of, of energy development and for that matter, economic development in the state? How central is it? What role does it play? Well, certainly it's, it, it's the regulatory, right? That's the primary focus of, of the kind and, and making sure, uh, right, that um, consumers are treated fairly, uh, right? Or when you take a look at the, our major utilities, they're all monopolies. So there's a certain, right, they, they, they do it on a pre franchise basis. They have certain commitments that we want them to fulfill and one of that is protecting the, the consumer. And so that's you know, part and parcel of our work in all of the utilities that we regulate. Uh, and certainly now, you know, I think there's a blending of we're not just regulatory, right? Uh, the world has evolved where you know, we're dealing with environmental issues, we're dealing with economic development issues, right? We, we deal with a, a whole other, you know, kind of the gamut, if you will, of issues that might impact and not just, you know, approving a power purchase agreement or, right, approving rates uh, on rate cases, right? We have to look at the factors of how does this impact the environment? How does that impact our economic development? So I think uh, it's evolved, uh, but I think, right, you know, I, I try to stay tried and true to what is the primary mission, right? Because I know having been in the executive branch, uh, there's a lot of other departments that are supposed to be doing, right? The economic development, the environmental issues and things like that. And, and to me, it's how does that information as a state, right? If we're gonna be coordinated, how does that get to the commission? You know, one thing is you, you've been there during the most um, unpredictable time we've ever had. I mean, I, I know that nothing is completely predictable and surely Hawaii is not completely predictable, but you know, this has really been uh, a tremendous discombobulation for the state. I mean, if you look at the legislature, oh, completely discombobulated and look what the, you know, the governor is spending his time on COVID all day, health department upside down over it. Um, what about the PUC? I mean, this is, is, is this what you bargained for, Leo? <laughs> because it, it isn't what anybody I, expected. I, I think, uh, you know, it's, it's ironic because Jay asks that question of Jenny and I like almost every week <laughs> when, we, when we talk about it. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm also a creature of habit, right? I, I would love to be in the office right now. Uh, we have been working from home since March. Uh, with very minimal people in the office as well. Um, and, and we're trying to get back to the normalcy of getting back into the office. But I think, you know, the, the commission has uh, kind of rolled with the punches on this one, uh, right? We have all of our staff working from home, uh, doing what they need to do uh, from home. If, if they need to get out, like, you know, some of our investigators, they also right, take a look at what's the conditions out there before you've been going out, right? And so right now we've kind of suspended right there, their efforts to go and do some of the investigation stuff that they need to do, which, yeah, it creates a backlog in work, but then you just have to deal with it. Um, I think, you know, we've, we've gotten to the point where 
uh, we are uh, basically working at home where it's electronic. Every, every staff member can do their work at home. I think there's some limits, right? We can't access everything uh, that we could access if we're into the, in the office, uh, but we're, we're making do. And um, I say that we, you know, as for me and probably the rest of our staff, right? They, they have rolled with the budget, still a lot stuff, a lot more stuff, but like we have uh, probably our first uh, uh, hearings, right? Formal hearings coming up, right? This is gonna be the first time we're doing it all online. I was right? gonna ask you about that. You're gonna do it yeah. online, huh? Wow. Do it online. Um, uh, we've had, you know, we, we've, we've viewed other agencies, how they've done it, the Land Use Commission, uh, the, the tax, uh, a council of revenues, right? So there's lessons learned in all of those on how to do it. Uh, so we've kind of taken the best and try to work with the resources we got. Uh, so we're going to, you know, forge ahead and do it online. Uh, we wish we could do it in the comfort of our hearing room, but you know, circumstances prevail that we can't we can't get to that. So and and the work goes on, right? We work we're not going. On. We're not going so, to delay stuff. So you've had uh, six months to uh, see how it works, <clears throat> and to you know find find the, the boundaries and so forth, find find the issues. And I wonder, you know, have you developed a kind of vision here about where energy is going? And I and I would add where energy is going now in the time of COVID, um, mm -hmm. the time of an economy that's kind of stuck around COVID. Um, where where is energy, especially renewable mm -hmm. energy, going? Uh, what is your thought about that, Leo? Yeah, um, actually, I've been I've been at the commission more than a year, right? Oh. So uh, that interim year uh, where I was appointed to replace Randy, and now right uh, re kind of reappointed for the full term. Um, so in that time, you know, I, I you know, looked at it. I mean, I was, you know, when I was at at the office of planning, we were um, we were looking at the future of renewable energy, right? Where is it going? And, and dealing with issues like how does it impact land use, right? Or right, agricultural lands and things like that. So a little bit different focus, but you know, I, I've always believed, right? We, we kind of set that goal. Uh, one of the things that when I was at the Office of Planning, we we're trying to figure out how do we get to that goal? Like really, how do we get to that goal? What's the vision? Is it, right? all windmills or all solar or, or whatnot, right? What's the mix? Uh, we haven't quite gotten there yet, but, you know, coming to the commission, um, right, those, those issues kind of follow me um, there and it's for the, the commission to consider as well. Uh, but then I think, you know, to me, the future is, right, we have a goal and it's 100% renewable energy by 2045, right? The 100% RPS goal. Uh, I've known for a long time, it's gonna get tougher as you get to the last mile, Yeah. right? Uh, and in this stage of COVID, I think, you know, um, yes, you know, it, like, you know, the financing world has, right, kind of been, you know, overturned and topsy-turvy and all of that. But I think the focus is still there. Right, the focus is the goal. So now it's how do we advance, right, projects that are ongoing, and also those in the pipeline, right. So you've seen, right, the RFP for right renewable resources up to 900 megawatts statewide, right, the biggest one. I think, right, we we keep pushing Hawaii Electric to like, hey, you know, stay on track, right. Even though you got COVID, you know, we we hope to see those. Uh, power purchase agreements, right, for review, right, in a timely manner, right, and right, there's in, there's incentives behind that for the company, but that's one of our ways, right, and and we don't, right, some of that is to come online, 2022, 2024, right, so we got to start, this project's got to go now, and right. it also has an economic development bent on it, right, because we looked at the uh, the, the governor's order, and right, construction development wasn't curtailed, right? It wasn't put on the side, it's like, keep going, right? Because we right. knew we had to keep something in the economy going. So 
right? In a way, that's one of our, how we saw it on the energy side is these projects gotta keep, keep going. These proposals gotta keep, gotta keep getting developed and uh, trying the best we can to, to meet that goal. Yeah, and, and the other side of that, of course, is that development of these projects uh, develops um, work and develops the economy, develops a workforce. It, yes. it maintains the, you know, the specialties, the expertise. So it has all kinds of positive effects yeah. uh, to keep on going. Yeah, and I think right, we, we're very aware of the challenges that each of those components bring, right? Like construction, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Do we have, right? They, they gotta operate within this new paradigm uh, that of, of of reacting or recovering from a pandemic, yeah. right? So I think, right, they're very aware of that and we know there might be delays here and there, right? But the more that we can just push and push and push to get these projects online and going, I think that's that's a benefit, right? It that's very helpful. A, a win-win, I think. For, yeah, for the and, state. and that's a, a, one of those things the state can do to help us reopen hopefully yeah. as soon as possible. Marco, what, what have you got? You uh, so, I mean, what you guys have on your, on your buffet table right now, Leo, is uh, pretty, uh, pretty stunning. I mean, from energy, transportation, telecom, and water. I, I think I've got all four of them. Maybe I'm leaving yep. one of the other ones yep. out, but I think I got all four of them. So out of all this, this smorgasbord of uh, dockets, which ones do you consider to be kind of the most critical, the most challenging to get right to the best of your and our collective ability? What really kind of, which, which dockets without, and I know fully, you know, you can't really get too much into substance of each docket as they're pending, but which dockets really, if not keep you up at night, have you chewing on, oh boy, this is a real challenge. Uh, I think for me, um, right, I, you know, Jenny and Jay come from that uh, the energy energy realm. Of the, that's their background. Uh, myself, I'm, I'm more of the generalist, so I think I, I kind of take up the other um, items. Um, but I think all of them, right? I, I think to me, all of them have their uh, criticalness, if you will, about right, getting things resolved, uh, especially in this day and age of of the pandemic, um, right? Certainly energy, we have some stuff that are, are pending that we need to figure out how we're going to rule on some of these projects, uh, rule on some of those uh, car purchase agreements, um, right? Going back to, if we wanna have more projects on, online, how do we get, right? Come to resolution of those, those particular dockets to move forward. Um, Obviously, in transportation, right, we have, um, right, our our sole uh, inner island carrier, right, water carrier that we need to resolve. Then, right, we, I think, you know, that kind of keeps me up at night because, one, they're the only ones that are linking the, the islands, uh, other than air, uh, air cargo. But then, uh, from what we regulate, right, they're, they're the only ones. And then, how, what do we do? Uh, and not only for the immediate, right, but the long term as well, right? We, right, we don't want to solve it, like say just for this year. And then next year we're back in the same discussion about that. Um, some of the private water and sewer system guys, uh, right, that that are under our jurisdiction or under our regulation, uh, they, right, a lot of them haven't like changed their rates in years, and now. COVID happens, right? Uh, so we're like, we're, we're asking them actively, like, keep us informed, right? The, the last thing we want is uh, you go out of business and a community suddenly doesn't have water or, or wastewater, right? Uh, and, and also our, our gas, uh, gas sector, right? Uh, what's going to happen with, with Hawaii gas? What's in their future? Same thing with uh, Hawaiian telecom. So we have all of these issues. Some of them are moving at some pace because and COVID has kind of delayed that pace, if you will. Uh, but, but I think all of them, right? We try to keep tabs on all of them and, 
and make sure there's some resolution because, um, uh, you know, to, to me, I think we need to get to some point, yes, right, COVID is going to be around for, for a while, right? There, there's no doubt, even when we get the vaccine, right? Um, and there'll be a, uh, and I don't like to use new, new normal, I like to use the next normal. Ah, that's so good. The, what does the next normal look like? And that's, that's what good. we're supposed to be operating under, right? Yeah. Having that kind of foresight to say, yeah, okay, we're going to have a vaccine, but things are not going back to normal. So what does that look like? And these companies and uh, utilities have to operate in that environment, right? Two, three, five, ten years from now. Yeah. Jay, if I could uh, follow up yeah. with a more kind of specific question as well. Mm -hmm. So, uh, one of the uh, uh, open dockets right now is, of course, the uh, Honua Ola, uh, aka Huhonua, Huhonua docket. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe today is the last day that the commission is accepting commentary or input on the Huhonua's request of a couple of weeks ago to reconsider your decision uh, not too long ago. So I, I know, again, there's, there's very limited, you can say, in substance, but can you give us some idea, uh, more or less, when do you expect the commission to respond to Huhonua's request for a reconsideration of that decision in terms of, of time as we look into the weeks ahead? Yeah, I can't. I can't give you a timetable right now, uh, Marco and Jay. I think, um, right, certainly right. The, the, um, the responses from the parties and also public input, right, today is the day. I mean, every day I've been getting emails upon emails. Uh, the latest things that have been filed are uh, motions from the different parties to respond to the, to the other parties' responses. Uh, so we need to deal with that issue as well. Uh, but certainly, right, the fir first things first is, will the commission uh, reconsider its decisions? That's the first, the first thing to kind of first hurdle, right? And then the next hurdle is, do we have that hearing, right? And what is that hearing on? Um, so I think there, there's some steps that need to be done um, first, uh, but, you know, Timetable, I can't. I mean, if, if we if we take in everything that we've had to review, um, that's like you know over a thousand pages of public testimony plus right pleadings uh, from the parties. Uh, some of them are terrific, right? They're like a couple pages, but some of them do get into it. So right, we're gonna have to take a look at those things and then render that decision. Uh, Time with all, I think, is the best I can yeah. tell you right now. Well, you know, this all goes to uh, how, you know, you were saying that the PUC has evolved over your observation of it. And indeed, mm -hmm. one, of the, one of the things uh, since uh, we got into renewables, and, and this is not the only state agency that has yeah. seen this evolution, is that everybody, everybody has an opinion on what you should do. And when you when you open the floodgates and say, well, we'll we'll take comments uh, by a certain day, it comes in from left, right, and center, from top and bottom, and and some people want to tell you everything about how they feel, and sometimes it's very passionate, and I don't envy you that, Leo. I I, I think um, it would be nice if you said, okay, all right, we're just going to look at the meat of this, and then we're going to we're going to respond by saying yes or no. Mm -hmm. End of a decision, yes or no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But unfortunately, you can't do that. And yeah. so it means more work, more time, and frankly, more distraction. I don't know how you feel about this, but that's my reaction. Any thoughts on it? No, I think um, right, it's, it's human nature to be emotional about projects, right? Even from a commissioner standpoint and reading some of the public comments that come in, right? Um, you know, a lot of it is trying to weed through that and see if there is something there uh, that, right, that, that possibly uh, could be an idea toward resolution. Uh, sometimes that's, right, someone just mentions it and, and they might be mentioning it in passing, but could be worth you know, looking into whether or not 
kind. I mean, and 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 that's where I write uh, a lot of in this biz, in this business, right? Whether or not other parties pick that up too, hmm. right? So, right? If say the consumer advocate goes, yeah, that's a great idea, right? The guy just it, it's in public comments, but then did anybody take a look at that? Right? That could be something to for us to take a look at. Yeah. Uh, so I think uh, you know the, that that's the tough thing about being a decision maker, right? Um, right. If if this were old school style, right, emotions are taken out from day one, right? You just look at the facts, nothing but the facts. Thank you, ma'am. Here's the decision, right? But it's been um, right, it, right. Not not so much the commission, but also party, right? Parties have been getting very sophisticated, right, in how they make their arguments and whether or not you gotta, right. I wouldn't want to say that we gotta fact check everything, but you gotta make sure that we take a look at it. Is it is it everything left uh, that we take a, took a look at, and that's where we are. Yeah, that's where we are in in, in, in our <laughs> democracy, and I suppose. Um, it's good to have a democracy like this. Yeah. It's, it's just tumultuous, that's all. <laughs> yes, correct. I'll agree with that. <laughs> so Marco, you want to uh, you want to sort of try to bring this all together here at the end of our time? Oh, so many more questions, Jay. So many more <laughs> juicy topics we could go into. Uh, so uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I wish we had an hour or two because there's nothing, no shortage of stuff we could uh, we could talk about, uh, yeah, it'd be great if we could uh, maybe do a session with uh, Jay, Jenny, and Leo, uh, and the two of us, of course, you and I, Jay, and maybe, maybe, you know, you know, you could do it for an hour, because a half hour would just go by too darn quickly with such charming, wonderful, intelligent people, right? So We're doing uh, that, we're doing that, you know, we have the webinar, we have the Zoom webinar, which allows us to have a larger panel, and we're doing what we call super shows. Um, so okay. yes, the answer, uh, uh, Leo, you can take this back. The answer is we can do that and we'd like to do that. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, I'll so just... Long, uh, so long that we share it that we're not uh, in a meeting where all three commissioners are, are present. Mm, sunshine. Mm, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the sunshine you both present to me this morning is uh, will last me for the rest of the day. So... Uh, <laughs> Thank you, Leo. Thank you, Jay, uh, as always, uh, and uh, more, more interesting stuff. And uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm confident and also uh, comforted in a way that uh, people like Leo and Jay and Jenny and Carolyn and my, my friends, Dave Parsons and Dave Matisse here and all the other staff members who I don't know their names, but, you know, it, it's, I won't say it's a thankless job, but uh, it's just a tough, it's a challenge like so much uh, in these days. And I really do appreciate all that you guys do and uh, I may not agree with everything but I wouldn't I wouldn't expect to but yeah I know you guys are all diligent and thoughtful and uh, very conscious uh, folks who are trying to do the absolute best you can and I, I really do appreciate that so thank you again Leo, yep. and Leo I, I really appreciate your answers and and the word thoughtful also occurs to me uh, you've been responsive and thoughtful in this discussion and I really appreciate that. Uh, and I'm sure Marco has already said he appreciates that. Mm -hmm. So I hope we can get you back. I uh, hope we can get to know you even better. It's been great getting to know you today. Yep, certainly, if there's an opportunity to return and get into a, you know, other questions that you <laughs> folks may have or might come up with in the interim, uh, <laughs> be glad to do it. Thank you, Leo Ascension. Uh, the newest PUC commissioner joining us here on Think Tech. And thank you, Marco. It's been a great discussion. Aloha to you both. Thank you. Aloha. Bye bye.